Tonight, the count is underway. Who will be named Tasmania's Premier? And we reveal the surprising results in an exclusive exit poll. I'm Josh Duggan in the tally room. Will Jeremy Rockliffe or Rebecca White have enough support to form government? And I'm John Hunt here at the Counting Centre in Muna. I'll tell you why independents and minor parties are expected to be key tonight. We'll also have a look at what everyday Tasmanians thought about this election day. Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Peter Murphy begins now. Good evening. After 39 days of campaigning, the people of Tasmania have gone to the polls to decide our next government. The election called by Jeremy Rockliffe after the defection of two Liberal members to the crossbench. We head first now to Michael Maney in the tally room to kick off our election coverage. Now, Michael, the big day is here. It's been a fast-paced campaign for sure. It certainly has, Murph. All that's left is for the votes to be counted. Welcome to the tally room, our nerve centre for tonight, where in a few hours we might get an early picture on who will form government. We'll have extensive coverage here tonight, looking at polling day and the tallies as the count progresses over the next few hours. First, we're joined by state political reporter Josh Duggan. And Josh, with the work done now, how did the leaders spend their days? Michael, with the votes in, the campaign over, both leaders were in reflective moods today. Rebecca White is hoping third time's the charm with voters after losses in 2018 and 2021. Jeremy Rockliffe is hoping to win an historic fourth term in majority government for the Liberals and today he took a trip back to where it all started for him. Walking into his primary school, mum by his side. Jeremy Rockliffe's biggest test is here. <laughs> there you go. We've run a, a good race, uh, very pleased and proud of our team. Uh, we've given it all we could possibly give. I couldn't be prouder. <laughs> He's done a really good job and I just hope that uh, to, at the end of the day he will have just as good a result. Sick of operating in minority, the early poll was cold in hope of regaining majority. A fourth consecutive majority is something no Tasmanian party has ever won. We've had a positive plan presented to the community and one that I'm very proud of, along with the other 34 candidates. Family by her side too, Rebecca White finishes the campaign satisfied. I feel really proud of the campaign that Labor has run this election. We've been focused on the priorities that I think Tasmanians deserve a government to be focused on. Compared to a disastrous 2021 campaign, this was comparatively smooth sailing. We have run a disciplined campaign that's been focused on the key issues of cost of living, health and housing. Labor's attack signs at polling stations caused a stir today. Signs aren't to be placed within 100 metres. But because they were placed there before midnight, Labor says they're allowed, a move the Liberals have called cheap and desperate. The Electoral Commission says signs shouldn't be placed on schools at all. Tonight we should be able to see a broad picture of how things are faring, but the polls are suggesting it's not going to be enough for either party to have majority. A larger crossbench than we've ever seen before, potentially, is going to hold a lot of power in negotiations over the coming weeks. Michael. Thanks for that, Josh. Well, we cross now to John Hunt, who was at a vote counting centre in Moona. John, the voters have done their bit today. What is next? Michael, counting is underway here at Moona and is expected to continue through the night. With more than 255 polling centres, along with more than 108,000 pre-poll votes, are in the hands of the Tasmanian Electoral Commission. The TEC expects the first figures to be available after a quarter to seven. However, with the move to seven seats per electorate, the results are expected to be a little slower. What is certain once the ballot papers are counted is the role of the minor parties, which are expected to play a big role in the next parliament. We spoke to some of the big players out on the hustings today. These are the people who could hold the key to government. Independents and minor parties gearing up for a parliament like no other. We are going to have to float around together and make sure we have the best outcomes. I don't want to be going back to an election in 18 months. This is a nightmare. I've always been open to conversations. I've always reached out to talk to them and nothing's going to change. The Greens aiming to double their numbers in the expanded House of Assembly. Change is not just necessary. It's possible. We're very confident that we have put issues on the agenda. 
But unlike past elections, they face stiff competition for the third party vote. Jackie Lambie's network looming large, predicted to gain up to three seats. She had a short but direct message to voters. Tasmanians wake up. Uh, if, you, if they haven't been able to do stuff in 10 years, how can they possibly do stuff in another four? Independents also featuring on ballot papers. Very few have been re-elected, with Clark's Christy Johnson looking to do just that. She's hoping her record and work ethic speaks for itself. I've been working really hard in the electorate the whole time I've been elected and I've just continued to do that for the campaign. Former Speaker Sue Hickey also looking to return in Clark. While open to working with everyone, she's praised Labor's message. I definitely think I'm leaning more towards the Labor's ideals of helping in housing, health, cost of living. David O'Byrne is a veteran of many Labour campaigns. This one, though, has seen him on his own in Franklin. However, he's hoping his party-free status will give him some sizzle. A lot of people from across the political spectrum have said uh, that they, uh, they, they like my kind of politics. Hopefully that's enough to get me across the line. Lara Alexander's defection to the crossbench was a catalyst for this poll. Facing a tough battle in Bass, she has no regrets. It's all in the hands of the voters, but whatever the outcome is, I am very grateful for the opportunity I had. Labour and the Liberals used polling day for one last warning about minority government. Both warned the tide is turned. Really disrespectful of both the major parties, but community will vote where they see fit. They would be deaf if they didn't understand. Now I'm sure, Michael, Meanwhile, many of those vote. key stakeholders will be watching on with intent tonight with those who get elected set for a busy few weeks. In the meantime, the count goes on. Back to you. Thanks, John. Meanwhile, vote counters have had a busy night ahead, tallying up thousands of ballots, Tasmanians making their voices heard. We are on the ground throughout the day. Tasmanians have spent their day lining up, waiting for their chance at choosing our next government. Hundreds of polling places hosting tens of thousands of voters, many with strong opinions. If Eric Kabet sends up as the Premier of Tasmania, I'm off. I'm leaving. Our second early election in a row, causing some voters to turn over a new leaf. Um, I actually put my first preference for the Labor Party. They actually won me over and I, um, I was surprised at myself. Normally I'm a full-blown Liberal member. Always have been all my life. This time... No. The Macquarie Point Stadium proving pivotal in a swell of anger at the major parties. I don't trust them. I don't trust them. Uh, I'd rather try for an independent. The big issues front of mind in Braddon. Well, as an elderly person with health issues, health is a major thing. While the democracy sausage made itself first preference at polling booths. How do you make the best democracy sausage? Uh, pinches of love. Lots of love. So popular at Deloraine High School, they sold out by two o'clock. Sales are good. We've done, we've done good. Yep, we'll be able to afford some books for the kids later this year, so we're, we're doing really good. Hobart's Mount Nelson Primary School once again featuring its famously funny cake stall. Cassio Coffee Cake making its return, unlike its namesake. But while it might be the biggest day on the calendar for our candidates, for others, it's just another Saturday. I nearly f entirely forgot, <laughs> but lucky I got in there. Annie Green, 7 Tasmania News. So how long will it take to get a result with additional seats in each electorate and polls predicting anything but a clear outcome? To help find out, we're joined in the tally room by Tasmania's Electoral Commissioner, Andrew Hawkey. Andrew, first, welcome to you. Should we expect that uh, the count, uh, an early count, therefore an early result will take longer tonight? So tonight, now that the polls have closed, all our polling place staff will turn their attentions to counting first preferences from the ballot papers they've received. We'll have those figures coming through to us over the next two or three hours, and that'll give us a, a bit of a, a guide as to how the parties have performed and the candidates have performed, but that's all I think we'll get tonight. So when should we have a full and definitive count? It's a complicated process with the Hare Clark system. We have to wait for all postals to come in, which will take through to Easter Tuesday. Uh, then we'll actually start the distribution of preferences, known as a Hare Clark count. But with an extra two candidates, it's probably going to take another five to six days. So we're still a fortnight away from probably knowing the final seats. A long slog. Thank you. We'll let you get back to work. Thanks for joining us. 
We can now reveal the results from our Seven Tasmania exclusive exit poll. Joining me is our election analyst, Dr Richard Herr. And Richard, these have been very accurate before, but what do the numbers tell us today? Well, as the poll suggested, we're going to have results all over the shop, and we did have some uh, changes or surprises coming uh, for this. Just looking at it statewide, we look like a 10 to 11 percent swing against the government, a 2 to 3 percent swing to the ALP, about a 2 percent swing, swing to the Greens. Independents have scored uh, well, but uh, Jackie Lambie has only statewide pulled about 6 percent. So it's, it's um, and a lot of this is going to depend on the flow of preferences, of course. But if we look at the individual results, you can get some idea of the complications that we'll face in tonight. In Bass, in Bass. Uh, our poll suggested that the Liberals have taken a pretty heavy hit. Now that may be uh, to the absence of Peter Gutwin from the, uh, uh, from the ballot there, uh, or it may be a uh, peculiarity of the, of the particular booth, but it certainly looks like uh, the Liberals will have trouble holding on to uh, three seats in uh, Bass, which would be a surprise. Labor seems to have improved its position well enough to look at three seats. And then we have the Greens as a possibility and Jackie Lambie uh, network as a possibility. Again, it'll depend on the flow of preferences and how much of a surplus uh, the two major parties have to pass on. All right, so we might, uh, we'll be back in the Braddon. Braddon. Yep. So let's have a look at Braddon now. So the Liberals 45.7. So uh, what does this poll tell us? Well, again, a big swing against uh, the government. Uh, they do have an outside chance at four seats here, but it looks like it's going to be, Braddon's going to end up something like three, two, and then one for Jackie Lambie and one possibly for an independent. Again, the, either of the two major parties might pick up enough if the flow of preferences uh, doesn't go to the independents and start shifting back to a major party. We might take a look at Lyons now, and uh, this is the exit poll, so what does this tell us, Richard? Well, it tells us that, uh, sorry, we're going to Lyons. Lyons? Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, again, uh, a swing against the Liberal Party, but not as severe in some of the other electorates. Uh, a swing back to Labour, but not strong enough to do them a great deal of good. Uh, and uh, the Greens getting an, pff, a, 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 an unlikely chance at a seat in Lyons. Jackie Lambie has a good uh, possibility here, but it's still going to depend on preferences for them. So at the moment, uh, Lyons might end up being split between the two major parties without anybody uh, outside of them getting a Guernsey. Let's move on to Clark now. And uh, what have we got here? The Liberals... Uh well, we're going to have the same mess we mm. had three years ago, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at it, I mean, because it looks on the face of it uh, as if, because the Liberals and uh, uh, Labour Party performed so poorly in this electorate last time, they haven't got a lot to, uh, uh, to lose. The Liberals have lost a bit of ground. Labour has picked up uh, some ground. Uh, the Greens have picked up uh, some grounds that, with the lower quota, might do them a lot of good. And then the independents look like there's only one slot available. So you could end up in Clark with a 2-2-2-1 two, two, two and one configuration there. And uh, our last one on there, do we have another one? This is Franklin. So uh, what is this telling us, Richard? It's uh, I a, a bit of a pattern, isn't it? Uh, well, it looks, as, again, the Liberals have taken a hit. Labor has taken a hit, but it's interesting, the Labor hit is almost entirely uh, accounted for by the very strong support for independence, which we assume is David O'Byrne. So uh, if, you, if David O'Byrne's vote were rolled into the Labour Party, they would be like they were elsewhere, pretty much one or two, but not much change. Uh, and then the, uh, the Greens uh, are, certain, are certain to get a seat. And uh, independence, as I said, we're looking at David O'Byrne as a very likely winner in uh, Franklin. All right, Richard, thanks for your thoughts. Uh, we'll be back in the tally room a little later, but for now, Murph, it's back to you in the studio. Yeah, thanks, Michael, and uh, we'll be catching up with you again before the end of the bulletin, of course.
And as you join us, it's time to head back now to Michael Maney in the tally room for an update on the election. Michael, the tally room looks like it's starting to become a hive of activity like we always see. Yeah, a few more people around Murph. The room will be a who's who of Tasmanian politics by the end of the night, with all three party leaders set to make speeches to the crowd. We'll hear from some of the other key players now, though. For the Jackie Lambie Network, it's their first tilt at state elections. And Jackie Lambie is at her party's election night function in Launceston. Jackie, how many seats do you think you're in the hunt for tonight? Oh, I thought we'd take all 12 out, mate. We might as well go in hard. That's what I was thinking. No, mate, I guess uh, to be realistic, one in each electorate um, would be nice. Look, what we want is to be able to get people into state parliament so there's finally some transparency going on. They're held for account on the decisions that they make and the bills they put through. Um, and that's what these guys will help. Basically, there'll be police on the beat. And that's what I think uh, it's well overdue in state parliament, Tasmania. Well, there's been some criticism that your party and candidates lack policies to put uh, to voters. Do you think that's a fair comment? You know what? The Liberal Party has commitments, mate. That's how much they've, they've drowned themselves out. They don't have policies either. Uh, they have commitments. We have discussion points. And the reason that uh, the Liberal Party has done that is because they know very well that they will not get a majority tonight and that will be their excuse to weasel out of anything that they've promised Tasmania. That's where we're at. And Tasmania looks set for minority. Now, your candidates will have a big say in crowning the next government. Who would you more, be more likely to support? Mick, what the mix is going to look like, mate, to be honest with you, um, it would be really um, stupid for my people to come in early and start throwing bits and pieces around. I think that what you're going to find is going to take a couple of weeks for those votes to finish up and to see who's who in those seven seats. Um, so I guess my people, as of tomorrow, will be back out taking their signs down um, and using their integrity and respect for the Tasmanian people and waiting for the count to finish. That's what we'll be doing. Now, we've heard you rail against the stadium. Would uh, canning that project be one of your big asks in return for any support? Um, you know what? The whole thing is, I don't know... Uh, that was a stupid thing to do in the first place. I don't know what that contract looks like. That's a problem. Um, because they haven't been out there on the front foot with the, the Liberal Party and haven't been honest about this stadium, I've got no sort of idea what sort of dirty, filthy contract that Jeremy Rockcliffe has actually entered us into. So does that mean if we've got to get out of this contract, is it going to cost us? This is where we're at this evening. This is where Tasmania is this evening um, over a contract because Jeremy Rockcliffe cannot be honest with the people of Tasmania. All right, Jackie, thanks for that. And uh, thanks for joining us. All the best in tonight's count. Thanks so much, mate. Thanks, Tasmanians. And now it's over to Sorrell to speak to one of those who played a role in triggering this election. Independent Lions candidate and former Liberal MHA John Tucker joins us. John, thanks for joining us. And regardless of what happens tonight, was leaving the Liberal Party the right call for you? I would do it all again, Michael exactly what I did in the first place. Well, yeah. as an independent candidate, uh, were you hearing from voters that they're disillusioned with the major parties? Yeah, that is very much so on the street. Would you like to elaborate on that a little bit? What, what sort of things were you hearing? Um, Oh, just people, people were supportive of our stance around transparency and accountability about the stadium, about Marinus Link, um, GPs, cost of living. Yeah, that's what people were talking to me on the doors. So if you are re-elected tonight, what uh, sort of things are you looking to, uh, to change within the government to, to contribute to a more stable parliament this time round? Michael, I'd have to say to you, let's just wait and see whether I make it into the parliament, number one, and number two, what the makeup is of the parliament before we go putting things out like that. All right, John, thanks for joining us and good luck tonight. Thanks, Michael. And we'll be back for another election update a little bit later on, Murph. Yeah, thanks very much, Michael. We'll catch you just before the end of the bulletin. And while most Tasmanians took to the polls today, others took to the bowl in a major skate event. The annual West Hobart Jam, open to all ages, attracted some of the best athletes in the country.
riding high. Athletes shredding up a storm in the 22nd West Hobart Bowl Jam. Yeah, this is the second oldest bowl in the Southern Hemisphere. Junior skaters first to navigate the 100 metre snake run before the big kids took over. Locals sharing the course with interstate pros. I'm from Signet, just enjoying the sun and having a skate with a lot of other people who love it as well. Yeah, we got Campbell Harvey, 13 year old, I think he's 13 year old Shredder. He's like this big, you'll see him, he's just gonna buy this place apart. Pressure on with hundreds of eyes glued to the concrete. It was very scary, you know, you, all those faces watching you and it's a pretty sketchy ball, but it's so much fun when you land a trick and everyone's clapping. Organiser Jimmy Skate and Street offering $1,500 cash to those nailing their tricks. <laughs> If you do something rad, I give you $50 cash so people could get gnarly. Brianna Boylan, <laughs> 7 Tasmania News. And to transport of another variety, six dragon boats made their way along the River Derwent today, powered by 120 crew members. The flotilla arriving at the Lindisfarne Yacht Club this afternoon before a regatta tomorrow. The only waves on the River Derwent this morning were from these dragon boats as they marked halfway of a major trip. Oh, it's great. It's been fantastic. Yeah, yeah beautiful, absolutely beautiful. The Four Bridge Endurance event saw 120 dragon boat crew members paddle down south, the fleet passing all four bridges as they went. About the 50 plus age, like to do novelty events, and this is one of them. Um, uh, this is a 40 kilometre marathon from uh, Norfolk Bridge down to Tasman Bridge. The trip taking five hours in total, the crew chalking it up to teamwork. Old Dragon Boat's about teamwork and being able to depend on all your team and members. Family, friends and loved ones watching on from a special vessel. The Governor's boat for many years, Princess Diane Di has been on that and also the Queen. With the majority of rowers from New South Wales, Queensland and Victoria, many plan on exploring Tasmania's land while they're down here as well. The reason why we do it is um, mainly to get people to our lovely state, Tasmania, and um, a lot of them will come here and they'll do this and then they'll probably travel on for a couple of weeks. Oh, well, and Port Arthur <laughs> and Cradle all Mountain, those things. We, <laughs> they're all good. They're we all only great. had two weeks, so we just yeah. do all the iconic stuff. So. But there's no time to rest just yet. A mini regatta will take to Lindisfarne Bay tomorrow. Ruby Cairns, 7 Tasmanian News. The Tasmanian Jack Jumpers have sealed their first ever grand final series win, levelling the championship race. The Jackies using the home court advantage to send a clear message to favourites Melbourne United, don't count us out just yet. Striking back to keep their title hopes alive, the Jack Jumpers revenging their 23 point loss in game one to stay in the hunt, pulling off the ultimate come from behind victory. Tasmania, live the mantra and defend the island. Looking to be on the verge of a 2-0 deficit, the Jackies relying on the passion of the Ant Nest. Sold out crowd. Been an enormous week for Tasmanian sport. Tasmanian-born Chris Golding leading championship favourites Melbourne United up 15 and firing the first 11 points in the second half. This time Golding. Ridiculous from Chris Golding. The Jackies digging deep. Jack McVeigh lifting them back in the third. I thought it was just a gutsy effort, really, at the end of the day. You know, down 15 in the middle of the third, and obviously things aren't looking really well. The fight going down to the wire in the final quarter. A late foul in the dying seconds, leaving many with a sour taste. I do not agree with that call. But I don't think that's in the spirit of what we're trying to get done here. The Jackies not letting the drama interfere, pulling off the heart-stopping win 82-77. to the miracle victory, down to the team's never give up mentality. It's just never give up, never quit uh, and keep fighting and they just kept their composure. No rest for the wicked, attention already turning to game three in Melbourne on Sunday. A chance to have a hell of a swing at them uh, coming up and we'll do everything in our power to recover and, and get after them again. The Ant Army lives to fight another day. Victoria Risto, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania remains on the back foot after a disastrous first innings in the third day of the Marsh-Sheffield Shield final in Perth. The Tigers all out for 186 runs. 
Corey Rocciccioli taking four wickets. Rocciccioli, I mean, this was in the first over, almost unforgivable as a, as a batting team who's trying to set the tone. A short time ago, Western Australia were in the lead by 287 runs with eight wickets remaining. Well, of course, as we all know, counting is underway to find out who will form Tasmania's next government. Back now to Michael Maney in the tally room. Michael, great insight so far this evening, and there's a bit to go yet before we finish the bulletin. No doubt about that, Murph. We've had an exclusive uh, exit poll, and that is something that's thrown up uh, quite an interesting uh, scenario. And Richard Herr is, uh, is with me. Richard, that exit poll, what does it tell us? What's the headline out of the exit poll? Well, the headline is that the polls... Uh, before the election suggested that there would be a minority government and our exit poll confirms that. We don't expect uh, the Liberals to get more than 15 seats. Uh, Labor will be struggling to get 13. So nobody's in uh, cooey of actually forming an, a majority with 18. So you're sort of calling it in, in, in a sense. We don't well, want to lump that well, right on you. but <laughs> Well, we're certainly saying that we think the polls are right. With the complexion of the parliament, who sits with whom and the rest of it is yet to be decided. But yes, it doesn't look like uh, the lead up to the today's election will produce a surprise as to majority government. It was as expected, minority government. Wow, that uh, is interesting. So uh, joining me now is uh, Josh, uh, Josh Duggan. Josh, uh, who is more likely to form this government if we need to pull a bit from here and a little bit from there? Well, as we can see with the Liberals having 15 seats, they are potentially 15 or 14 off our numbers. Yeah. They are the most likely party to form government on those numbers in terms of looking at only need to find three or four supporters. And with the Jackie Lambie network there providing two, three seats and a couple of independents potentially, it could get them there. The problem for the Liberals will be throughout this campaign, we've seen a lot of incredibly aggressive tactics. People will remember the, the fake Jackie Lambie network website and that really put Jackie offside so there's going to have to be some relationship mending in order for the Liberals to find those extra seats they need whereas I guess Labor has a potential partner there in terms of the Greens the challenge for them will be are they willing to get back inside with the Greens after it was it it was a, a tough minority government 14 years ago when they were last in power it's a much different count isn't it uh, yeah. Richard and, and Josh I, I think the problem for the uh, Labor Party is that even if they, if the Greens pick up four seats and they're willing to, they would still need a couple of more uh, cats to herd, if you like, <laughs> to form it, and that much that will make it much more difficult. I, I suspect uh, the Labor, sorry, the Liberal government is going to uh, have to make a deal, and if it, they may have to decide that they deal with the Greens because there's only one party to do or they may have to deal with a series of independents, and that hasn't been a very good look for them up till now. On, on Labor dealing with an independent, there is one independent that could yes. make a strong return to the Labor Party, which would be David O'Byrne. Yeah. Obviously, four or three years ago, kicked out of the caucus and then now running as an independent. There was always the potential scenario that David was going to be called on for support to form a Labor government, and yes. the, these numbers suggest that that is one possible. Well, that's right. If, if um, if the Labor Party were to exceed the expectations we have with, of 13 and David uh, O'Byrne were to rejoin them, they could be tied basically with the Liberals as a potential wedding partner in a, in a deal sharing, you know, power sharing arrangement. Yeah. And Josh, this has been a unique situation this year. So much interest in independence, so much interest in Jackie Lambie, the new wild card in the, in the whole scenario. Uh, tipsters and, and I guess guys that are assessing these things are, are having a bit of a nightmare trying to work out the numbers. So it must be uh, really well, bizarre. Watching Richard go over the numbers earlier yeah. today, it was it, he, I certainly saw that. But it is interesting, the trend we've seen nationwide towards minor parties and independence. We're certainly yeah. seeing that track down here. Yeah. There's yeah. been a generation of actually defection from the two major parties which is going to be continued tonight and we still don't have any count figures coming through and i think one of the things that we heard was it was going to be a little bit longer this year mm. trying to get the numbers through because i guess what they want to do is bunch a whole heap of numbers josh through at the start and then just give us a good indication early so they're holding back maybe a few of those numbers was going to take a bit longer 
But I certainly think once we do see those numbers, yeah. it is going to be incredibly interesting. And I think we'll hear a few yeah. mo or cheers or potentially groans from the crowd behind us in the tally room. On that, Josh, uh, from the figures you were giving me, there is nearly a whole electorate uh, in numbers, uh, about 90,000 who have already pre-polled or postal voted. So, uh, and that will complicate because they have to be counted separately from the booth being counted. So, uh, it'll take a while. It's going to be a long, long process for uh, the men who are looking at these ballots. Andrew Hawkey <laughs> has got a big job ahead of him, uh, Josh, hasn't he? Because this is, uh, this is a little bit unique, a little bit different in Tasmania. It is. It is. The hair clerk system is very complicated and most of us struggle to explain it, but it's um, a lot of people view it as one of the best ways to have democracy. And we are going to go to uh, Nick Kelly a little uh, shortly just to get his uh, thoughts on what's going on. He's, in, he's placed in, in Burnie, but, uh, but Richard, how do you see... How do you see... Who is more likely? We got some thoughts from, uh, yeah. from Josh a moment ago. Who do you see is most likely to be that... that person or that independent that, that is going to uh, try and form a majority government with, with whoever gets the most seats in selection? Uh, well, it depends. If it's multiple independents, then it's going to be more difficult because they don't, the independents haven't necessarily coalesced around uh, a whisperer who helped organize a, uh, preference exchanges or at least informally because we don't have a how to vote card. And that was always going to be a difficulty. But there was nobody actually trying to get the independents to guarantee at least one of them gets up. And they may end up cutting each other's throats before the end of the night. I mean, it may well be that uh, their vote doesn't lodge with another independent, but ends up supporting a major party. And that's why we have such a range of predictions as to how large the major party vote is going to be. Well, I mentioned just a second ago we were going to go to Nick Kelly. We're going to go to him right now in Burnie, and he is at Labor's election night function. Now, Nick, numbers are trickling in from the Braddon booths, but uh, what's the feeling like among the Labor faithful? Yeah, good evening, Michael. Uh, people are still trickling in the door here too after uh, being far and wide across the electorate today. And there's certainly a, a, quite an air of anticipation in the room at the moment as we do wait for those first uh, numbers to come in from the booths across Braddon at the moment. Uh, now, Labor's uh, two incumbents in uh, Braddon, Anita Dow and Shane Broad, were both elected second and third behind Premier Jeremy Rockliffe last year. Uh, now, the same as the other major parties, Labor has fielded seven candidates candidates here in Braddon this time round. Uh, typically uh, this has been a fairly, an area of fairly strong support for the Premier uh, but it is widely tipped that the Liberals will need to pick up a fourth seat here in Braddon if they're uh, going to be uh, successful in gaining a majority. Uh, there's also three Jackie Lambie uh, party uh, network candidates running here in Braddon. It's also been widely tipped that this is their best chance of securing a seat. Uh, but certainly at the moment, without any numbers trickling in, it's hard to really uh, get a gauge on the vibe in the room at the moment. There's certainly a lot of nervous pacing happening here at the moment, Michael. Uh, but we do certainly look forward to uh, seeing what those first numbers are when they do arrive. Thanks for that, Nick. Nick Kelly and Bernie. Now, we are getting some votes trickling through. So we're going to take a look at what it looks like early. And our first electorate is Bass. So, uh, Richard, let's, let's take a look at that. Yes. Sorry, I'll have to switch glasses. Apologies to the... Uh, well, there's not much we can see there. Um, at this stage, uh, Michelle O'Byrne and Finlay for Labour are doing well. Uh, Michael Ferguson and Rob Fares doing well. Simon Wood. On the whole, uh, they're, they're sticking with uh, what we were showing in the uh, exit poll, that it's going to be... Let's go to Braddon yeah. and... Uh... Jeremy Rockliffe, well, you'd expect that. He's, uh, he's way out in front. That's his yeah. turf, isn't it? Yes, but uh, we're looking here at uh, Craig Garland, and at the moment, he's the one, the independent, we thought had the best chance of picking up uh, Braddon, and at the moment, he's in front of the Jackie Lambie network, so we'll have to watch that. Uh, in terms of the flow of preferences, Liberals are doing well enough to certainly... Uh, get their three there. They will hope with some defections that uh, they have the outside chance of holding on to the fourth because they need to have four uh, uh, seats in at least three electorates to have a chance to form a government. 
We don't have anything for Clark, but we are going to Lions. So uh, Clark's not through. So we're going to Lions here. So Rebecca White, wow, that's uh, yep. that's early uh, with only 0.69 of percent. That's true, but uh, she, as the party leader, she would expect to carry the the vote. I mean, that's uh, people will go and. It's a good thing for her party if she does get that name recognition and uh, and support. Once you start getting, for example, look at some of the other, the Liberal Party ones. If once they get spread around, you start worrying about leakages and what what will stick with the party as you go through. All right. So that is the early look at uh, what is happening with uh, with things. So Murph, it's back to you in the studio. Good evening. 22 is the state's top today across Hobart and Launceston. 20 in Devonport, Burnie, 21. 15 across Lyweenie and Strawn, Smithton, 19. And 21 in Flinders Island. Cloud was seen over the west of the state today with some scattered cloud throughout the northeast. Further out, a large mid-level cloud band is seen over most of the country with some isolated thunderstorms across the tropics. Tomorrow, showers are seen across the southern, western and central areas of Tasmania, with troughs sitting about inland Queensland. Westerly winds tomorrow 20 to 30 knots, reaching 35 knots in the far south, swells up to 6 metres in the western south and up to 2 metres in the north. A gale warning is current across the southeast coast and southwest coast, as well as a strong wind warning for most areas across the state. Tomorrow's forecast now, Hobart and Richmond 19, showers in Ouse. In the north, 20 across Launceston and Devonport, cloudy in Deloraine. Burnie tomorrow, a possible shower, 17 in Strawn, Curry 19. St Helens, partly cloudy, 19 in Swansea and windy with a possible shower in Whitemark. Looking ahead to the three-day forecast now, Monday, fine apart from showers in the west with a possible morning shower in the northeast. Tuesday, light showers about the west and far south. And Wednesday, fine apart from light showers in the west and far south. Capital cities, 29 and sunny in Perth tomorrow. Showers in Brisbane and 33 in Darwin. And currently Hobart cloudy and 17, Launceston mostly sunny and Devonport 19. That's all in weather tonight, Murph. It's looking like we can expect some cloudy conditions across the next few days. Well, if you're saying so, Jackie, it must be true. Thank you very much for that. You know, they say politics and sport don't mix, but I do hope you stay with us for our election updates during tonight's Swans Bombers game. From all of us here at the News Team, good night.